In the ever-expanding saga of America's housing crisis, a new development is on the horizon, raising concerns. What appears to be a legislative effort to address the housing dilemma is sparking a potentially transformative shift. The bill is not only attracting attention from real estate developers, but is enticing some of the nation's corporate giants to become landlords, with a focus on major corporations such as Google, Tesla, and even theme parks like Universal Studios. Let's dive in. The US Census Bureau's data reveals that more than 36% of households in the country opt for renting their residences. Since the onset of the epidemic, the cost of renting has surged to unprecedented levels, with Zillow reporting an overall increase of 29.4% in rentals. Inflation emerges as a key factor contributing to the escalation of rental costs, with a notable 11% jump in rent observed in 2022 compared to the previous year. This upward trend continued into 2023, reaching a national average increase of 22% in November when compared to pre-pandemic levels. According to Realtor.com, the year 2021 witnessed a surge of 10.1% in rent prices, coupled with a 6.3% increase in inflation. Inflation, affecting all costs, particularly those related to real estate, prompts landlords to raise rent to offset the impact of inflation passed on to renters, the National Low-Income Housing Coalition highlights a severe shortage of over 7 million affordable homes for the nation's 10.8 million plus extremely low-income families. The grim reality persists as no state or county offers affordable two-bedroom apartments for renters working full-time at minimum wage. Additionally, a staggering 70% of extremely low-income families find themselves burdened, paying over half their income on rent. This shortage poses a critical problem impacting every state and community across the nation. Families are left with limited options, exacerbating the issue each passing year and contributing to the rising homelessness crisis. Now, the deepening crisis in affordable housing, which has been on the rise for years, is on the brink of worsening unless federal policymakers step in to implement crucial reforms and expand the low-income housing tax credit. The nation's largest program dedicated to the production of affordable rental units the Light TC, initially established with bipartisan support under the 1986 Tax Reform Act, has demonstrated significant success by facilitating the financing of approximately 110,000 affordable rental units annually, totaling more than 3.7 million over the years. However, a new challenge has emerged as Light TC financed developments constructed after 1990, when the federal government mandated developers to maintain affordable units for 30 years, are approaching the end of this stipulated period. This poses a critical issue, as landlords can potentially convert these affordable units into market rate rentals, exacerbating the nationwide shortage of affordable housing. In the absence of intervention, hundreds of thousands of low-income renters may face eviction if unable to afford the market rents. Experts estimate that nearly 500,000 LITC financed units, constituting almost a quarter of the total, will reach the end of their 30-year limit by the close of this decade. Without proper incentives, many landlords are likely to convert these affordable housing units into market-rate accommodations with higher rents. Although no concrete actions have been taken to address this impending problem, there is a push for new legislations aimed at encouraging the development of new low-income housing projects. Corporate company towns are springing up chair of the Senate Finance Committee, Ron Wyden, in collaboration with Senator Dan Sullivan and two bipartisan members from the House Ways and Means Committee, has introduced companion bills in both the House and Senate. The objective is to establish a tax credit specifically targeting the development of middle-income rental housing. Patterned after the low-income housing tax credit, the proposed Workforce Housing Tax Credit would subsidize 50% of the cost for new construction throughout the building's lifespan, or 20% for rehabilitated and bond-financed structures. The credit is designated for buildings whose units are occupied by individuals with incomes at 100% or less of the median income for their area, with rents maintained at 30% of a specified income. Affordability restrictions would remain in place for up to 30 years, with an additional 15-year affordability period mandated after the initial compliance period as part of an extended commitment. The credit allocation would follow state population, commencing with an initial rate of $1 per capita and a minimum $1.5 million allocation. 
Flexibility is allowed for projects in areas identified by the Department of Housing and Urban Development as difficult development areas. Companies are now seizing the opportunity presented by this new bill, preparing to construct affordable housing for their employees. This trend is reminiscent of the company towns prevalent from the 1880s to 1935. During that era, remote job locations such as railroad construction sites or lumber camps prompted employers to establish company towns, wherein a single company owned all buildings and businesses. Company towns occasionally emerged from a paternalistic initiative to create an ideal workers' village, complete with churches, schools, libraries, and other amenities to foster healthy communities and productive workers. For instance, Google recently gained approval for its extensive 153-acre mixed-use neighborhood development in Mountain View, known as the Google North Bayshore Master Plan. Partnering with real estate developer Lendlease, Google envisions over 3 million square feet of office space and 7,000 residential units in this 30-year project. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla, Boring and SpaceX, Elon Musk also wants to become his employee's landlord. Plans for a company town named Snailbrook, around 35 miles from Austin, Texas, have been uncovered. Musk intends to construct 110 homes near Boring and SpaceX facilities in Bastrop County, offering housing at affordable rates, starting at around $800 per month for two or three bedroom homes, a considerable reduction compared to the median rent in nearby Bastrop, which hovers around $2,200 per month. Living in Snailbrook will come with increased dependence on Elon Musk for employees. Apart from receiving a salary from Musk's companies, residents will also pay rent to him. In case of termination from boring or departure from the company for any reason, they have a 30-day window to vacate their homes. Discussions have taken place about extending housing opportunities in Snailbrook to workers from Musk's other companies, considering Tesla's Texas Gigafactory is approximately a 30-minute drive from Bastrop. Meanwhile, theme parks are also joining the bandwagon of companies turned landlords. Universal Studios Florida, spanning 840 acres, is not just a fantastical destination for visitors, but is also grappling with real-world issues like the soaring cost of housing for its 28,000 employees in Orlando. Central Florida has witnessed significant rent hikes during the pandemic, and the Orlando Kissimmee Sanford metro area faces a severe shortage of affordable housing with only 15 available units for every 100 extremely low-income renter households, according to the National Low-Income Housing Coalition. To address this, Universal is embarking on a new project in Central Florida, a 1000-unit mixed-use development named Catchlight Crossings, scheduled to open in 2026. This initiative aims to provide convenient housing for service industry workers, ensuring a short commute to nearby tourist attractions and hotels. Universal donated 20 acres of land adjacent to the Orange County Convention Center for this project, partnering with local developer Wendover Housing Partners. Even Disney, Universal's nearby rival, is stepping into the realm of affordable housing. In 2022, Walt Disney Company announced plans to contribute 80 acres for a proposed one, 450-unit affordable development, set to open in 2026 near Flamingo Crossings Village. This village caters to participants in Disney's college internship program and also leases units to some Disney World cast members. Beyond major theme parks, even smaller ones in more affordable areas are venturing into home building. For instance, Indiana's Holiday World opened Compass Commons, a $7 million development in May, Designed to provide seasonal housing for up to 136 employees, it replaced a proposed theme park attraction originally slated for launch last summer. These partnerships between entertainment industry employers, developers, and local government represent innovative solutions to address the ongoing scarcity of apartments for lower-income households. The adverse implications of having your employee. As your landlord examining the company towns of the 1980s, despite their economic success, they often faltered politically due to the absence of elected officials and municipally owned services. Consequently, workers frequently lacked a voice in local affairs, leading to a sense of being dictated to. Ultimately, this political environment bred resentment among workers, causing many residents to lose long-term affection for their towns. While the companies spearheading these contemporary projects argue that they can address the nation's shortage of affordable housing, 
it's prudent to approach these plans with a measure of skepticism. America's historical single-employer company towns are marked by a dark history of exploitation and labor conflicts. While the current initiatives don't mirror the harsh realities of the 19th and early 20th centuries, they are unlikely to usher in a new era of futuristic techno-utopias. Based on the publicly disclosed plans, major corporations like Google and Meta don't seem to aspire to such lofty goals. Instead, their visions for urban living spaces closely resemble what we are already familiar with from modern real estate developers. Sleek office buildings, lush parks, and walkable main streets featuring coffee shops, salad bars, and attractive apartment buildings. It's a pleasant vision, but hardly revolutionary. Contrary to the floating cities or domed villages envisioned by science fiction writers and Peter Thiel, these scaled back plans reveal that what these companies truly seek is a competitive edge. Their primary goal is to allure and retain top talent, ideally bringing them back to the office. The current robust state of residential real estate adds another incentive. While the commendable objective of constructing more housing, including affordable units, is present, it serves as the finishing touch. However, it's crucial to recognize that these companies will only pursue these plans as long as they align with their business objectives. As America grapples with an ever-worsening housing crisis, the proposed Workforce Housing Tax Credit seems like a glimmer of hope, aiming to encourage the development of affordable housing units. However, the unexpected entry of corporate giants into the housing market raises intriguing questions about the future landscape of American communities. While these corporate initiatives claim to address the affordable housing shortage, history warns us of the potential pitfalls associated with company towns. As we navigate through these developments, it remains crucial to scrutinize the true intentions behind these initiatives, ensuring they contribute not only to the bottom line of corporations, but genuinely address the pressing needs of the workforce and the broader community. Will this mark the beginning of a new era in housing solutions or a chapter in history repeating itself? Only time will tell.